Welcome back to watching Business Morning here on Channel Television. We heard there from Mr. Dili Alaki about some of the pronouncements of President Bola Tinubu uh, that it has to do with tax, especially telecommunication and excess duty, 5% tax, and some other issues there um, on the finance bill. What we have joining us to elaborate on this, Mr. Ayo Digi Abel, the Managing Director of Optimus by Afri Invest. Thank you so much, Mr. Abel, for your time this morning. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, uh, tell us some of the implication of that announcement yesterday. We did see equities surge, but it's been surging, so we cannot say if exactly that announcement had anything to do with it, even though we saw Airtel also, you know, move, made some uh, positive move after a, a little bit of some days, you know. But tell us, what are some of the implications of uh, the suspension of excise duty and, and tax? Okay, thank you. Um, the first thing we are all aware is that once tax is imposed, yeah, it's it has its cost element. It means that if it's from the company's perspective, uh, it means that you would, it means the company will be paying more. And if it's also passed to the consumer, it means cost of product will go up and consumers will pay more. So effectively, what these have done is to reduce the burden on businesses. We are all aware that uh, when you look at on an uh, endless list of taxes, um, some would say close to about 40, some would say about 50 type of taxes that is being charged or, uh, on the business, which is a major drag. We all know that the SME drives over 50% of activity in the country. And if those taxes continue, we, we're already seeing a lot of them winding down because it's going to be like a cost body. So effectively, what this has done is to give these companies or give the companies and also consumers a bit of time. Uh, we are all aware uh, the prices of um, the fuel prices have increased, which has also impacted on transportation costs. We have also, also we have also seen also seen the depreciation of the naira, which would also impact on cost of items. So that in itself is a uh, it's a major they are uh, major burden on companies and on nigerians so this is a major sign of relief uh, for some the, uh, the the implementation period has also been uh, is being extended so it gives companies also to plan uh, because you know what actually happened then was uh, it's uh, it's backdated so you would see that it it would have come as a shock because if you have done your projection and suddenly you have been there's a cost that you, you are not need, you are not aware of that you now need to commit to. That's really set companies uh, company back. So I think this is a step in the right direction. And like you mentioned around the market, you know what drives market is positive sentiment. While this may not be directly linked um, to the performance we are seeing, uh, it's also riding on those positive sentiment, positive uh, policy moves that we are seeing this government make and the expectation is that if it's sustained if it's backed with the necessary moves and policy action so we'll, we'll, we'll continue to see that um, gyration that we're currently seeing in the stock market so about the five percent telecommunication tax i remember when it was introduced i mean <laughs> of course we talked about it here and a lot of people were not so happy about it now that that five percent has been uh, suspended what can telecommunication users expect? Okay, thank you. So I think that is just is what it, uh, the implementation has not. I don't think it has kicked in, um, and it has uh, that uh, percentage has been added to in terms of the cost of calls or the tariffs, if we will put it that way. So uh, currently, what what I think to expect is that. Indirectly, is the savings uh, that we implied savings in quotes uh, would also maybe just be channeled to maybe the quality of um, the services to improve on the quality of services, the expansion that is being carried out by the, the, the telcos. That's what we would also would expect to see. But we know when you look at um, the sector where they also operate, the cost cost of doing business in Nigeria alone is also very high. You have to provide your own power. Most of the ETSs have about two gens that are running, um, running as uh, one as backup. So you would see that in some countries where you don't need to run on this run on on gen, 
the cost may be lower. So while uh, we understand that, yes, the cost is really very high in terms of running the tel telcos, uh, that implies savings will just also just be channeled to uh, see how they can sustain that quality, the expansion uh, that we're also seeing within that space. And there was also the part um, that the finance bill has been deferred to September. Could you help us, uh, you know, break that down? Okay, thanks. Yeah, so uh, well, for the finance bill, most time we've seen in the last maybe five or six years, it's always been released and it starts with the budget. So it's always to what we've seen, the finance bill, what they focus more on is how well you can be able to Get more, um, get more revenue in terms of taxes adjustment based on effective uh, fiscal policies. So what we are saying effectively has happened is that rather than the effective date for some of those taxes that are that is contained in the finance act to kick off, it has been moved to August. Yeah, so there would still be more time. I think in terms of the passage, in terms of implement passage and signing of the finance act. There were the number of days that is required for most, for especially the tax element, where it was not observed. I think minimum of 90 days based on the national tax uh, policy, so that uh, for companies are able to plan their cash flow, companies are able to see how they want to restructure their businesses uh, in view of that tax. So I don't think uh, companies did not have enough time. So it was like it's like backdated and when you want to when you want to calculate the tax so i think this is a positive one and it gives everyone uh, companies businesses for them to plan uh, ahead of uh, the, the kickoff dates of of um, of the uh, finance act mm, but it doesn't really reduce the burden because you know this 2022 finance bill was kind of controversial um, manufacturers, as you mentioned at the beginning of your, of your conversation here, I mean, companies are expected to use about 40-50% of their profit for taxes. And, and I mean, we're tr it's a fragile economy at this time that is, uh, we're trying to build. So if they are burdened that much, you know, a lot of people would have expected, oh, maybe some of the taxes will be taken back to the old rates, uh, like the tertiary institution that was increased, you know. And a lot of people did not know when the former president, uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari, signed it. I think he signed it on the 28th of May. So a lot of people were like, oh, okay, so maybe there are going to be uh, some reduction, you know, to help ease that burden on businesses. Yeah, I think you have hit the nail on the head. There's a need to still suspend some of those taxes or to review that, um, that act, that the finance, uh, 2022 Finance Act. There's a need to review it because um, based on the reality in terms of cost of doing business is high. And I, I think uh, uh, speaking to what one of the main objective or drive of this new government is to reduce multiplicity of tax. So there's a need to also reduce that so that uh, you can be able to benefit from the bigger pie because once you, you squeeze those companies now, they don't grow. And, and at the end of the day, you only continue to enjoy a little part of the pie. But if you give them a bit of tax all the day or reduce the burden on these companies, they grow bigger, they employ more. And even whatever percentage that they are paying, because it's based on the bigger business, would be higher than continue to feed on the smallest business. Mm. Well, we do hope uh, that uh, the presidents will hear some of this and will act on it to ease the burden on uh, businesses that are supposed to provide employment, even the non-oil exports we are talking about to get more of the foreign currency. It all falls on these businesses. So we do hope there will be some changes before then. We can be hopeful. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Ayo Dijebo, the Managing Director of Optimus for Afri Invest. Thank you for your time this morning and have a great weekend. Yeah, thank you. And always my pleasure.